A very good evening. Welcome to our special election show, GE 2020 Today, coming to you every night during this election season. I'm Harianto Diman. And I'm Rachel Kelly from Money FM 89.3. And you can subscribe to the Straits Times channel so you never have to miss an episode. So far in this campaign, we've seen candidates going on walkabouts, canvassing for votes door-to-door -door, and holding virtual rallies. Tonight, candidates from seven parties hit the airwaves in party political broadcasts. That's right, and speaking directly to voters, the opposition parties urge them to deny the People's Action Party a two-thirds majority in Parliament, making the case for why Singapore needs an effective opposition. For the past 20 years, the PAP had a strong monopoly. However, prosperity has not flowed to all Singaporeans. Many PMETs are still out of work, and the jobs are displaced by foreigners. The previous mandate did not always mean good outcomes for Singaporeans. Our long-term dream is for Singapore to have a healthy democracy where there are two or three parties who could form a competent and honest government. We have seen from the experiences of other countries that power can fall into the wrong hands. The PAP is not immune to such a risk. PAP self-checking can fail. If the wrong people show their true colours only after reaching our highest offices, Singapore is finished. To us, politics is not about self-glorification. Neither is it about enriching ourselves. Rather, it is about speaking up for you, our fellow citizens. And we do this by striving to be the kind of opposition that you've told us that you want. Competent, constructive and compassionate a responsible opposition that does its homework, one that criticises the PAP when it is warranted, but gives credit when credit is due. The opposition parties also raised the issue of HDB's 99-year leases and falling prices for older flats. Speaking for the PAP, Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiat said his party is seeking a clear mandate and over the last five years, the PAP has delivered what it promised. To work together effectively, we must all pull in the same direction. A strong and capable government will help us achieve this, even more so during a crisis. The PAP is up to this task. The PAP's leadership team is tested and proven. PM Lee and the older ministers have seen Singapore through many previous crises. Together with the 4G leaders, we have a leadership team that is ready to take on whatever lies ahead. Moving on, candidates representing the Workers' Party and PAP are campaigning hard in the new St. Kang GRC, which has been dubbed a hot seat in this general election. The Workers' Party candidate, Jameis Lim, returning to the campaign trail after a TV, TV debate on Wednesday where he urged Singaporeans to vote for the opposition and deny the PAP a blank check. This morning, Trade and Industry Minister Chan Chun Singh and Minister in the Prime Minister's office, Indrani Raja, hit back at Mr Lim's comments, saying that the PAP will never have, have a blank check to do as it wishes, as it's accountable to Singaporeans. Now, earlier in Seng Kang, Labour Chief Ng Chi Meng, who's leading the PAP team there, told residents that they will set up a new town council within three months if they win on July 10th. And he noted that a new town council will allow them to know residents' requirements more intimately as the areas are served by two town councils at the moment. Mr Ng's team comprises Amrin Amin, Raymond Lai and Lam Pin Min. Now, meanwhile, over in the new single seat of Marymount, the battle is on between a former colonel and a former general. And new PAP candidate Ms. Gan Xiao Huang turned up this evening meeting with voters at the shops and eateries along Bishan Street 22. Ms. Gan was the first woman to attain the rank of Brigadier General in the SAF. 
A few hours earlier, Progress Singapore Party candidate Dr. Ang Yong Guan was seen campaigning along the same street, and he said he's unfazed by his rival. I'm a colonel. He, she's a general. One grade lower. You don't talk about rank. You don't talk about academic qualification. I'm ready. I can, using my experience, my wisdom, uh, my beliefs, that Singapore need to, to, need to deny PAP the two-third majority. Walkabouts also continue today in Woodlands. Mr Zaki Mohammed, who's part of PAP's Marsling UT team led by National Development Minister Lawrence Wong, responded to criticism that the ruling party called for an election during a pandemic so that the voters will make a flight to safety. My, my interaction with residents, you know, I, I know many of them are rational people. I think they know and they can assess to themselves what each party puts on the table. I think SDP has put on the table a series of ideologies. As you can see from the Marsling UT team, they put in place plans solid plans, asset developments, town developments, social programs, as I shared earlier on, employment programs. And I think it's up to different political parties who are on the table, what they stand for, and for them to also share with residents how they can deliver this, where the budget, whatever they have proposed, will come from, and what resources do they have on the ground to execute. Over at Coven, Coven Hogang Market and Food Centre, the Workers' Party Saljunet GRC lineup, including Mr. Faisal Manap, Mr. Leon Pereira, and Mr. Gerald Giam, were also on a walkabout. They were joined by outgoing WP MPs Lao Tia Kiang and Peng Eng Huan. And in Kampung at Marlti, the National Solidarity Party Sembawang GRC slate, led by Secretary General Spencer Ng, also walked the ground in a bid to win over voters. From the ground to the digital space, it's another busy night online with parties holding the virtual rallies. For the PAP team led by Defence Minister Dr Ng Heng Heng, in Bishantopayo, their focus is on helping seniors and vulnerable families. Dr Ng noted that by 2030, about 70,000 residents will be above 60 years old. That's 40% of residents. To help them as they age, initiatives such as fitness stations have been introduced. He also shared that there is a community scholarship for Bishan and Topayo to help with education. Over the last 10 years, this has benefited 180 families. Dr Ng added that his team will build on these initiatives and do more for residents. You can't wave a magic wand and say, let's give aid to everyone. Unfortunately, this... Uh, it, it takes time, it takes uh, resources, it takes uh, commitment of volunteers using government schemes and our own schemes like we have in Bishan Topayo, and it takes effort. So I think we have the wherewithal to be able to deal with this. It's uh, huge problems, uh, and but we must uh, face it with tenacity. We must give it our all to make sure that uh, we can help as many people as we can. Moving to the opposition side, on the second episode of The Hammer Show, Workers' Party candidates spoke about building a resilient economy post-COVID-19. Mr. James Lim, Ms. He Tingru and Mr. Gerald Giam talked about Singapore's dependence on low-wage foreign workers. Mr. Giam said the government should make the construction sector more attractive to local workers and provide loans to reduce the costs of automation. Um, you know, we can't uh, assume that there will always be uh, lower wage countries um, to which we can actually uh, import workers to actually make up for any shortfalls due to demographic changes. Uh, we can't always assume that they'll always be available to us. So, you know, our, our economy and our strategies really need to be uh, ag agile enough to, um, to adapt to this possibility. And I, I actually think that, you know, the time for change actually needs to be now rather than when it happens. Speaking in Mandarin, Mr Chua Keng Hui said it's important to support SMEs as they employ about 70% of Singapore's workforce. He also stressed that the Workers' Party is not looking to spend unwisely or raid the national reserves, but to use them to invest in the people. On a lighter note, 
a number of candidates running in this election are making a statement with their choice of fashion. And with the COVID-19 pandemic, donning a mask has become a challenge for face identification. So bespoke masks have become the in thing among candidates. PAP candidates have been spotted with masks and embroidered, embroidered with their names and party logo. But Mr Tan Chuan Jin, who is contesting in Marine Parade Jiasi, upped the game, completing his look with a pair of shoes that says Maju and La. At Bishan Street 22, where the Progress Singapore Party was making its rounds, Dr. Ang Yong Guan stood out from his group. And he was wearing a white shirt with his face printed on his torso. And also fusing technology and fashion, the back of his shirt was also printed with a QR code. And once scanned, the, users, the user is directed to Dr. Ang's website page with links to his social media platforms. You know, Rachel, party candidates have taken to social media to reach out and engage with voters by showing a side of themselves you won't see on the campaign trail. Now we trawl through the online space and here are our picks for today. First up, who knew that Workers' Party Chairman Sylvia Lim can more than carry a tune? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Lim posted this video on her Facebook page on Tuesday and has already gotten more than 200,000 views. In the four minute clip, the WP candidate for Aljunate GRC led viewers into her home and talked about how politics have changed since she first joined the party in 2001. And letting voters know more about the party candidates is an important part of the campaign process. And the People Action Party candidate Sakyandi Supat took viewers on a ride as he answered questions while cycling around the constituency. In the four and a half minute video posted on his Facebook page, the candidate for Bishantopayo GRC was asked 10 questions including What's the first thing on his mind when he wakes up? And of course, his favourite food in the Topayo area. Each is definitely not a barrier when it comes to navigating social media. Progress Singapore Party's chief Tan Cheng Bok proves just that with his strong Instagram game. With over 3.5k followers, the West Coast GRC candidate tries to personally reply to all the comments on his posts and reshares Insta stories that he's tagged in. The eight-year-old also shared how he is keeping up with millennial speak, learning words like hype beast and woke so as to relate to his younger audience. Uh, in one particular post, Dr. Tan revealed his humorous side by sharing that his glasses do not have lenses when asked what is one thing that people don't know about him. Mm. And those are our picks for today. If you've come across anything creative that the party candidates have posted on their social media, do share them with us in the comments section below. Before we go, a reminder that you can watch GE 2020 Editor's Take at 1pm on Friday, where our senior editors give their insights on the top news of the day and why it matters. You can also get live breaking news and updates as they happen by following the live blog on our GE 2020 microsite. It has everything you need to know about the general election, including special reports, guides and videos. There we have it. Once again, I'm Harianto Diman with Rachel Kelly from Money FM 89.3. Thanks for being with us. We'll leave you now with a recap of today's hustings.